we're going to start a new series and the title is uh, Prince and the Principles right Prince and the, the Principles we will see because <clears throat> when Jesus tells us to love and it is he also tells us it's a commandment right what are we focusing on on the person of Jesus Christ or on the principles please understand this there is a very fine line between that if you shift towards the principles you will end up with a religion because and it will the reason is I don't care what uh, what you what you say or what the Lord is tell, uh, telling me now at the present moment but I am uh, grounded in the in in, uh, in in the principles now uh, I'm not telling principles are bad right please get me uh, clearly by the end of the message you will uh, you will understand I'm not telling principles are bad you must be right in, in, in principle it's it's good but if the reliance is more on the on the things that you are following than in uh, in in the love of God or on the on uh, our wise stayed on Jesus Christ then comes the problem then comes the problem I'll just tell you a few few examples when Jesus uh, uh, opened the scroll, when he was called to read the scroll, when he opened the scroll and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and uh, he went on to tell and then he goes and sits down. And then when everyone is looking at him, he tells, this is fulfilled in your hearing. Immediately what happens is, how can this man such a, speak such a blasphemy? Everyone turned because they were grounded in the religious beliefs that the, this is uh, this is my picture or my image about the Messiah. If the Messiah doesn't fit into that, or if someone tells uh, anything that requires hearing and learning, I will uh, I will I will not uh, I will not budge to it. I will not listen to it. Then what happens? You you are each time we reject either the love or the person of Jesus Christ. Our heart tends to become harder and harder. Jesus also tells one, one in one place. He tells uh, that uh, you are looking in the scriptures as if the uh, as if uh, 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 the eternal life is in there, and you are not coming to me, right? You are not you are not coming to me. Please understand, everything about the Word of God that that is in this book is true, but the life comes when you take this and go to Him and uh, and uh, learn from Him the the truth that is behind every every word. Right, the, the letter kills, the spirit is the one that gives life. So you take the scriptures, the same scriptures, there is no other Bible that uh, anyone can reach from. It's the same scriptures. And uh, when Jesus was also teaching, he was teaching about the same thing from the Old Testament, right? What made the difference was its application and the truth behind it. That's why I'm telling you, principles become right when you go to the prince and then uh, learn from him. And if the prince if you don't go to the prince, then you're following a religion, a set of rules. So that's why I said, whenever you are reading the, reading, reading the Bible, when you read the Gospels, and uh, you will look at the life of Jesus Christ, if you go towards the left, you will end up in the Old Testament and the principles. If you go towards the right, you will end up uh, with uh, the epistles. Right? Please understand. If you do not understand the life of Jesus Christ or the gospel of Jesus Christ, both will lead to extremism. Right? Either on the on the Old Testament, on the on the uh, on the right is the in, in the New New Testament. Right? If you don't follow the gospels, please understand. Your belief system will become a set of rules, and there won't be any love in it. You see many people in uh, in uh, Christendom itself. If you see many people, they, they say that they are following the Lord. They are following. They are following, but there is no joy in their life, right? There is there is no tenderness in their hearts. Their hearts are hardened, and they say, "I will follow." They follow the Bible and they follow the Christianity, but their hearts are hardened, right? There is no joy in their life. That's why I tell many people, uh, and I tell myself also many times. I tell many people. I tell myself many times. When, uh, when your life is rubbing against the other, does it cause comfort or does it cause pain? That is what I want you, you to check. When your life is rubbed against someone, when someone comes and touches you or when you touch someone, 
because during the day we touch so many people many people touch us right what is happening you know in the in the in the, in the college days um, my my arms were very very strong these knuckles because of martial arts and different practices so whenever i was walking in crowd i wanted someone to hit me hit the knuckles so that and they, they, they would do that because i know my 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 hands were very 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 hard because we to hit the walls so i wanted someone to hit me hit me someone touch the walls touch my touch my knuckles and when they do i would feel pride <laughs> strange kind of the nimitta paisa ji ka anand apur not now so what i want to tell the what they tell is when your life is rubbing against someone what does it cause friction does they friction <laughs> yeah friction but that friction does it leave a good feeling or does it leave pain right that is what you need to know in day to day life if that is not there in your day to day life you are following a set of principles and you are not following the prince because when the prince is in you when you are following the prince right you will be a source of strength and comfort to everyone that comes into contact with your life you will add value you will be a source of strength you will be an encourager you will be a comforter and uh, you will you will represent jesus christ very well i'm telling you please understand sir john 20 let's turn to john 20 john 20 verse 1 and we will read uh, uh, we will read a large portion of the scripture 1 to 9 we will read john john 20 uh, was uh, was one onwards all right so let me read whichever way that you want to uh, turn your bibles to you can i turn the pages it's a good sound now when you turn the page So let me read. Talk to yourselves. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the womb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, "They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him." Continue. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, you know who the other disciple is, and uh, were and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Right? Underline the word first. We'll come to that later. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went uh, into the tomb and. Uh, everyone read that part and he saw the linen clothes lying there right continue and the, the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen clothes but folded together in a place by itself then the other disciple who came into who came to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believed remember this is talking about not about thomas this is talking about john right most of the time we we focus on uh, th- on thomas and what jesus uh, jesus told thomas blessed are the ones who believe uh, by not seeing and uh, uh, by not by not just by seeing but who do, who will believe just by the word right it is uh, written about john also that when he saw he believed anyway the focus is not on that the woman went to the tomb first who went what what men doing i don't know huh The woman went to the tomb first. Uh, men, they were not. Uh, uh, I don't know where they were. However, they were not expecting the resurrection. Please understand, they were not expecting the resurrection. The women who went there were not expecting Jesus to rise. They were going there to perform a religious activity. Please understand, when you are coming to the church, what are you expecting? When you come to the church, what do you expect God to do to you? What do you expect? Or is it a religion that you are all oh, church can the punya mostly? It doesn't work that way. When you are coming, you are coming with a certain mindset, 
right? What is the mindset that you have come today to, to the church? Is what I want to ask everyone. I question myself too. Why am I going to the church and what do I expect God to do in uh, your life and my life? What do you expect God to do? What do you expect God to do? They were not uh, expecting any resurrection. If they knew that he would arise, they wouldn't have uh, left the tomb. Yes or no? They wouldn't have left the tomb. They would have stayed there in the tomb. I want uh, uh, the slides. Right? They wouldn't have. Why would they be in hiding if they knew that he would rise from the tomb? They would gather and be celebrating if they knew that he, was, uh, he, would, he would arise. They came with frankincense and uh, milk. Right? To do what? To do, to cover up something that uh, they thought would be smelling by this time. They didn't want their body, their uh, Lord's body or their Guru's body to not to stink. They came to perform a religious activity. Many of us do the same thing. Oh, today is the first 10th or 15th, whenever I get my salary, let me take this to frankincense and then come to the church. Right? I have to do this religious activity. Some come with joy, some come with pain. Right? Please understand this. Whatever that you are coming to the church with, you need to know what are you, what are your expectations. We sang a song today that we we want you. It's not about the blessings. We want you. It's a and the, that is the person. Please understand. It is the person that you must be seeking and worshiping. If worship turns out to be singing songs and uh, you are you are you are a part of it, it's you are part of a religion. And that I don't want anyone to have in this church. I want you to love Jesus Christ individually and then expect Him to do the, the thing that He is capable of doing, changing, changing the water into wine. Changing the water into wine. Let's see. The Master was gone, they loved Him and, uh, and uh, their love did not change because of conditions. One thing good about them was they still loved the Lord. They were in a shock, but they still love the Lord, that's why they came here. There are few people who are full of passion even when it is painful to show passion. Please understand, there were four people who carried the paralytic. You know what is, what is the paralysis, uh, what, what does paralysis do? What does paralysis do? Right? What does it do? Suppose there is a paralytic, what happens to him? He cannot, or he cannot, that means, please understand, that means the head is still talking but the body is not obeying. The head is talking, the head is telling the hand to move, the hand is not moving. Why? Though it is there, it is disconnected. Some of the church members are like that. They say that they are connected to the head. The head is talking, but because they are paralytic, they, they refuse to take the command from the, from the head. They refuse to function in the way that they are supposed to function. Please understand, are you a paralytic? When the head is talking to you, when the Lord himself is talking to you through his word, through his whispers, through the spirit of God that he has placed inside you, when he is talking, if you are not obeying, then what are you? What are you? Right? Check if you have paralysis. When God is telling you to move, if you are sitting down, you need a good, you need to look at, look at it, look at yourself and see. And, uh, and check that you need help. There was a paralytic and uh, what did the, the four men see in a paralytic? The four men saw, we know that whether he was a friend or their relative, we don't know. They picked him up, right? They picked him up and then what did they do? They took him to Jesus Christ. When the house was full, they climbed over the house. When when uh, the roof was there, they removed the roof, they tore the roof open, and then what did they do? They lowered him to Jesus Christ. Please understand one thing, church. We need people like that in the church. Right? It's not about the protocol, it's not about the principles. It's about, it's about the person. 
that they want to worship and they know they had confidence in the person he says if i just take him to jesus christ another person is going to be going to be healed what did they do they, the, they didn't worry about the principles they didn't worry about their self reputation they tore the roof open they said this man needs to be in the presence of jesus christ they lowered him that's why i'm telling you if you focus on the prince it is better and jesus didn't rebuke them he says great is your faith right didn't rebuke them at all what did he what did he do i'll tell you the pe the, the people who focus on the principles and not on the prince there were four people who focused on the prince but there was a multitude who were focusing on the principles what did they do when jesus said son what did he say son your your sins are forgiven what were the people focusing on how can this man heal the how can this man forgive the sins what were they focusing on he says i don't care about the principles let me take this person to the prince and the prince what did the prince do prince heal them right did he say that you broke the protocol and then came to me he says uh, this is uh, what i need such people are required in the kingdom the more th those people who are focusing on the principles and self righteousness they will never be able to achieve much neither they will have the joy neither they will appreciate the people who got healed they will not appreciate they will not appreciate the great work of god they will not appreciate the the person who got healed or who got benefited out of uh, out of uh, out of people's faith and god's miracle what kind of a person are you are you a person who worried about the principles and the protocols or are you the one who is focusing on the prince think about it think about it that is the reason rejoicing is not there in our hand we will not be able to church i guarantee you we will not be able to rejoice if we focus on the principles apart from the prince apart from the prince that's why jesus said this is the commandment what's the first commandment to love your god when you love your god protocols will go out of the window right you will be worried uh, you will only be only be worried about somebody getting benefited god being glorified that is all you worried about loving god loving man you want to honor jesus christ you want to, the people to get benefited that's what you will be worried about and then to such people to such people you will find them uh, them having the joy of the lord and they are not shocked or surprised or changed by the circumstances or the things that happen to them or don't happen to them they are not offended they are not offended about what people tell about them what people talk to them the way people talk to them or the way people talk about them they are not worried they are worried because their honor they know they when they honor god god will honor them they are not worried about their dishonor please understand this very well the b that's why i am telling you focus on the prince focus on the prince and then what happens you will have the kingdom that he said he is going to that he that he promised you will have righteousness peace and joy bubbling out of you the reason you don't sin should be out of because i love god that's why i don't sin it's not because uh, i will not sin because people will talk something about me oh he is a righteous man there are two ways that people live one they live telling that i will not sin because i love him the other people the other batch you know what they say is no if i sin what will people talk about me or think about me what kind of a person are you to the second person there is always a pressure a person whose focus is not on god and on the principles is talking about self image he has a graven image about the, about god not the not the real image that god wants her, you to have he has a graven image please know very well when jesus was crucified where was lazarus where was he jesus raised him up from the dead called him out singled him out where was he next slide where was the samaritan woman where was she the woman at the well 
Where was she? We don't know. We don't know where she was. No record at least. She was nowhere near the crucifixion. Next slide. Where was this woman? The woman with the blood issue. 12 years she went to every doctor. 12 years. Right? And the touch of the... He, she came with a lot of faith, touched the hem of his garment, got healed. Where was she? Where was she? Where was she? Continue. Where was she? Where was the where were these five thousand people and men? Where were the five thousand men who ate and saw the miracle firsthand? Where were they? Where are they? We don't know where they are. Where were they? Tell me where were they? They ate. They saw the bread multiply and the fish multiply. I'm asking you, church. If you do not have a grateful heart, if you don't love the prince, if you are the person who is looking after or who is after the blessings only, you will not be found. You will not be found in the most important things. You will neither see the crucifixion nor the resurrection. That means what? You are dead. What kind of a person are you? I'm asking you, what kind of a person are you? Anybody can love you when you when you are up, when you have money, when you get promotion or when you buy gold. Right? But when you are up against something, when things are not happening as you thought, when the hell is all around you, right? Many people withdraw because they don't see benefit in you. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your neighbor. What kind of a person are you? Gratefulness is a must for every born again believer. Everyone who tells that I know Jesus Christ, check if he's grateful, if he's thankful, if he's not, then he's not a person to be trusted. Please understand this very, very carefully. Many people talk about sheep. Many people, I wanted to share this in the pastor's conference too. Many people talk, many pastors talk about sheep. Many people talk about sheep. Are the sheep cute? Are the sheep cute? Yes or no? Right? Yes or no? Did you ever go and smell the sheep? Did you? Anyone? Did you go and smell the sheep anytime? Right? How's it? Right? When Jesus said, you are my sheep, he knows that he stinks, yet he died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows. It's not that the wool that we gave that we wanted to make blanket from. He loved us. He knows the smell that we have, the body odor, which is uh, not covered by any perfume that you use or the deodorant. He knows our, the smell of our, of our body. He knows. And yet, he says, he loves us. Yet he says he loves us. I'm telling you as a pastor. Where are the 5,000? Sometimes people just suck up all you have and once they sucked up all what you have, they find you useless and then they drop you and go away. Please understand, be prepared for every situation. Please understand. They came to the tomb to see if they can do something in the situation they cannot change. They came to see if they can do something to the situation that they cannot change. Imagine how they went to the tomb, feeling low and depressed. That's how they went to the tomb. Many people come to the church like that, even today. They come depressed, they come low, they see that if what, uh, what they can, uh, what, uh, what, what happens, something may happen to me for, 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 for a benefit. As a taker, they keep coming to the church, day after, week after week, year after year. Why did you come today? Why did you come today? What expecting what did you come today? Please understand, if you come to the church, not knowing that Jesus has risen from the dead, I don't know why you are coming. And if you are coming, knowing that Jesus rose from the dead, then come with an intention 
to listen to what he has to say to your heart. It's not about my message. It's about what he speaks to you individually. During the worship, during the service, during the time when the word is being shared to you. What is he speaking to you individually? That's what matters. And listen to that voice within the voice. And then begin to align your life. And uh, while I align, align my life, align your life according to that. That is how the change comes in each one of us. After 400 years of silence, no prophetic word, nothing. Then Jesus came, 33 years he lived, 3 years of his ministry and suddenly he is dead. So everyone who has known him, seen the transition of a, of a wonderful man to become a prophet and then declare himself as the son of God, die, crucify and die even they were in shock. Please understand. The reason you will be in shock if you don't pay heed to what Jesus taught. Prabhu Nair Pichindi, Bodhinchin Dhanmira Mana, Manamu Uddesh Santoti, Manamu Dhanmira Mana Drishti Kendri Karichi Unchaka Pode, Manamu Nirutsahaka, Nirutsaha Mede Tontado, Ada Mana Manasuni, Mana Jeevitani, Avarinch Kuntundi. Please understand this. If you don't focus on the teachings of Jesus Christ and you are running after miracles, the moment you hit a wall, depression comes over you, envelops you. That is what happens. The people who are offended when something happens to them are the people who are not focusing on what Jesus taught. Jesus said you will be, you will face offense. People will speak about you, speak to you offensive things. Not being offended is the character. Not being offended. Offended, anyone is offended when something is spoken to them in the wrong way. Please know church, it's important that you focus on the teachings of Jesus Christ. A man who is focusing on the teachings of Jesus Christ is not offended. Is not offended by the things externally. He will say, thank you God. Thank you. And uh, because he reads that Jesus was telling, offense will come. Don't be offended. Look up to God. He has been teaching these things to us. So please know. Then what happens? We don't know how many came, but how did she go back? She ran. Right? She felt she right? How did she go back? She ran. She ran to tell Peter. And then what did Peter do? Now, where did the running begin? It began with a woman. Right? Who came, who confronted, who saw there, and then she ran to tell the news. Whatever that is. The moment they started that, that moment triggered a lot of things. Resurrection, the revelation about the resurrection will make your heart leap and will give you, right? Will, there are sometimes, it is, uh, I want each one to know, there are sometimes that uh, you need to quit crying over things. You need to quit crying over your past. Please understand. If you run towards God, you are running towards your future and you are running away from your past. Please understand this. Always run. Say run. run. Tell your neighbor to run. 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 Because when you run, the, the, the way you run and the speed that you, with which you run is the speed that you are moving away from your past and you are running towards your destiny. Please understand, heaven is not destiny. God is. God is the destiny. Say, God is destiny. God is, destiny. God is my destiny. Man, one thing that I can tell you for sure is nothing is sure except the word. Nothing is sure except the word. Life will sometimes disrupt you. Sometimes uh, your job, sometimes your marriage, they will disrupt you. Right? But the thing is, the more you are focused on the word of God. Listen. Everything will compromise with the word of God. The word of God will not compromise with anything. Because this cannot be changed. That means everything, everything, if you put your trust in anything else other than the word of God, right? It has to compromise. That's why Bible tells very clearly, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right? 
Why? Because everything has to come in agreement with the word of God. Everything. That is the reason why we are advised not to put trust in anything else. We have to ask some strong questions and I want you to ask yourself. Don't be in a place where God has to ask questions. I'm telling you church, don't be in a place where God has to ask you questions. The first question God asked, what is it? The first question, Adam, where are you? Did God, doesn't God know where he is? Doesn't he know? Doesn't he know? Yes or no? That's the thing. Why did he ask that question? Why did he ask that question? Who was hiding? Please understand. Deep inside your heart, deep inside your heart, you know when you are not in line with God and you go into hiding. You go into hiding thinking, only thinking that you can hide from God. Right? Even the thought is there is no truth in that. There is no truth in the fact that you can hide from God. There is a beautiful song that they sang. Right? Right? Because he is he's there. Where can you run from him? And yet you think that you can run from him. The best thing that you can do is come and say, God, my life is open. Right? My life is open. Please understand this. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Is what Jesus asked. Jesus asked Saul, what did he say? Why are you persecuting me? Why? Because when his life was being rubbed against the other, there was a pain and torture that was coming out of his life because he followed a set of principles and he didn't follow the prince. That's what religion will do. That's exactly what you are also doing. I am right. Yes, you are right. Maybe you are right. But are you righteous? Is the question. Whenever, I'm telling you, husbands, friends, whoever you are, whatever relation that you are in, it's not about whether you are right or wrong is the question. Whether you are righteous, focus on that. Focus, focus on my attitude, my way of uh, conveying things, my way of, uh, uh, you know, stressing on the fact that uh, like I must win an argument kind of thing, right? Check whether you are talking about your right or whether you are talking about righteousness. What is your argument about? What is the conversation that you are having within yourself is about whether being right or whether being righteous? A person who focuses on the prince and loves him will talk about righteousness. Hey, I know, I, I know, I know I am right, but I forgive you. That will be the change of a person, a person, that will be the change in a person who focuses on the prince. Amen. Who focuses on the prince. So focus on the on the prince church. God never promised you that it will be as you thought it will be. Right? God is not shocked. When we are shocked sometimes, because all things are in his control. When you are in a mess, when you are in a mess, God is in control. You must know this truth. When you are in a mess, know that God is in control and he loves you. I want everyone to understand this. When a difficult situation comes, when your situation becomes overwhelming or it is heavy on your heart and mind, please know that God is in control and He loves you. This must not change in us. This must be settled in our hearts and minds. That yes, God, I am facing a difficult situation. I do not know. I do not know. I don't see the end of the tunnel. But I know, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death and it is dark out here, I know you are with me and you love me and you are in control. Any situation. Because Bible tells, it tells very clearly that God is faithful and he will not allow you to pass, he will not allow you to go through a situation which you cannot bear because he is faithful. 
because he is a faithful God. So please know. I want to tell you, when the life demands you to get up and run, get up and run. Don't wait, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Right? I want you to check the next slide. Let's move. You are planted, you are not buried. You know, one thing about planting trees and burial, they both are same. Same procedure. Yes or no? When you want to bury someone, you dig the grave and then you bury. You won't expect him to rise. When you plant, same procedure, you take the seed, you plant and you expect it to grow. What does God promise you? He says, you will not die, I'm just planting you, you will rise again. That is, a, that is why we are not supposed to be afraid of death. The fear of death should not be there. The reason is he is planting. He planted Jesus Christ knowing that he is going to rise. He was not buried. Do you understand? He planted. A seed. A seed. Right? When it stays in the fridge, it stays. When it is taken and it is buried, then what happens? Continue. Then what happens? How does God see you? And how does how are we supposed to do? This is this is what the seed is. And you know how you are inside the seed? Go down. This is how you are. This is how God sees you when you when He drops the seed inside. This is this is the coffin. And what is happening? It's it's a, it's from here you're going to rise. Please understand. I don't want anyone in this church to be afraid of death. It's not for us. The moment Jesus stepped inside your heart, he stepped inside as the way, truth, and the life, not as the death. He replaced the death that we have in us with life. And that is why he says, do not fear. You know how many times do not fear is mentioned in the Bible? 365 days. That means all days are covered. Right? Every day. He tells you not to be afraid for two reasons. One, he's in control. Two, he loves you. The song that we sang, God still loves the world. Yes, he does. Continue. Next, next slide, I want you to, I want you to see the, the following one. This is the difference. Please, I'm telling you, church. Right? When you see, the procedure is the same. The procedure is the same. And this is what I want you to picture. People who have lost the beloved ones, no, they were they were planted. They're going to rise again. That's that's the hope. We have also sung the song. It is for the hope. It is for those who have hope. Right? The things looks uh, looks brighter. Depression is not from God. It's a lie of the devil. And it is a luring thing that Satan has towards religion. He wants you to, he wants you to, he wants you to, he draws you into depression. He draws you into offense. Telling that you have a right to be depressed and right to be offended. No, you're not. According to the word, you are called to be righteous, not right. Only. Please keep thinking. Some people, you know, they don't attempt things. The reason is they are conscious about their own self and their personal image. I would rather aim for the stars. Someone said beautifully, I would rather aim for the stars than not to aim at all. Right? I'll just read what uh, this man said. I would rather aim at the stars and not hit them at all. I would rather go after it and uh, not get it than not going at all. I would rather try and fail than not try at all. Please understand this. Don't get up every day and wonder what, uh, what is going to happen today. Get up and tell them I'm going to love God, I'm going to honor Him. No matter what happens or what I have to go through, I will honor Him and I will, I, will, I will love Him. Why? Because He loves me and He's in control. 
Don't focus on the principles, church. Oh, I have read Psalm 91. Yes, yes read Psalm 91. You can read it in many ways. Religiously and with a, with, a, with a focus that God, I know you are with me. And because you are with me, right, I will be able to walk through this day. And no plague shall come near my dwelling. And I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord as it says in Psalms 118. There are ways that you are going to read the Bible. You have also sang the song. What did you sing? If you don't teach me, Tuna, Sikhaido, like, uh, what, what is the verse? Huh? What should it be? Manana lage, Tu, Sikhaido, Nato. I'm telling you, you can read the Bible all by yourself. You can sit down in the presence of the Lord and read along with Him. Read along with him. How are you reading the Bible? How are you reading the Bible? I met. You might have said, I'm telling you, there are questions some of you sitting here have. I messed up my childhood. But please know this. Because God loves you and He's in control, you don't have to mess up your present, present, uh, present age. <clears throat> when God gives you a chance and an opportunity, don't try to be cute. Run. Run. Take the opportunity. Please understand this. When you throw a fishing rod in the in the in the in the pond or in a in a in a lake, when there is a movement, what do you do? What do you do? You pull it up and then you pull the fish back in. Right? Please understand this very carefully. It is here. The last slide, the plantation, this is the last slide. Please understand. This is what you need to have in your mind. Right? God has planted me here. Right? He has planted me. He has planted me. God has given a word to me for the new year which I have shared to you on 31st. But I am telling you, the next year, great things are in, are in store. And lot of things are going to uh, going to come your way. I'm telling you, for those who are alive and for those who fix their eyes on the on the prince and not just the principles. Amen. Amen. Some of you have stopped running, and uh, you do not know that you stopped running. Some of you don't know that you stopped running. Please understand this very carefully, church. Understand this very well, as we. Come to come to come to close of this uh, of, of this of this message. I want each one of you to ask good questions to yourself. Good questions to your own self. Is God? Am I a person who is focusing on you or the or the principles? Am I am I a person who is worried about my image? Or a false image about you. Please understand. Both are dangerous. Both are dangerous. Both are dangerous. Because honor comes from God. No matter what you do to protect your uh, self-image, if the honor is not from God, your image matters nothing. Saul, I know. I know Jesus. I know. I know Paul. Who are you? Who are you? I know you are a hypocrite. You have a graven image about yourself and the God and you have no connection to God. You are a paralytic in the spirit. I know, Satan knows. If you are a paralytic in the spirit, he knows. That's why in the realm of the spirit, no one can tell a lie. No one can tell a lie because all the spirit, spirit, spirit world, they know the truth. And that is why Jesus said, know the truth and that truth that you know will set you free. Will set you free from what? Will set you free from these things. If you don't know the truth, we, you and I will still remain in bondage. Right? We may fool around people and have a, uh, have a self-righteousness uh, image about our own selves. But we will never be able to have a real image that God wants us to have. That's why 
as we, because that is to bring the communion. As we have the communion, please understand this. It's a promise of the Lord. What is it? Is that I will live in you and you in me. Whoever eats of this flesh and drinks of this blood, it's a promise that he stays. It's not the principles of only. It is about the person who stays in you and as a person, he wants you to stay in him. This is what he wants. Everyone. And God willing, if you have baptism today, please understand the reason the, you want to have, the reason God says you must die is because when you die only, right, a new life will come out of you. A new life will come out of you. You have to go underground. You have to go underground. Right? Because it is then when you are quiet, when things, uh, when God is able to resurrect you, is able to raise you up, is able to raise you up. Please know church, I want you to understand and uh, focus on, for, focus on the prince. Say God, does my life hurt anyone? My wife, my children, my neighbors, whoever that is. I was on every eye closed. I want you to focus on yourself. Focus on yourself, you and God. Don't be caught on the wrong side, church. Don't be caught. If it is you whom God is speaking and telling you, Saul, Saul, why do you, why are you persecuting me? Please understand one thing very clearly. If you are, your life is rubbing against someone and someone is getting hurt by your rubbing, by your rubbing, the question that God asks Paul is the same question that he asks you. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The reason he asks you is, if your life is hurting someone, it is hurting him. That is why, within the marriage, let there not be any depression, because of your not focusing on the Prince of Peace. Do not let your husband or your wife or your children suffer as a consequence. Because depression is a lie and you are believing a lie and you are, you are, when you believe a lie, you empower the liar in your life. 